es tut mir leid, ich weiß nicht, wie es funktioniert. Really? Nee, das habe ich nicht gemacht. Oh, okay. But at the same time, I should have just put on a heavy American yeah. accent. Servus and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Felicia. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I have been living in Cincinnati, Ohio off and on since 2016. And this is my friend Josh. He Hello. is from here, but he's fluent in German, so we have a bilingual friendship. And I thought it would be cool if we talked about that a little bit today. So Josh, tell us a little bit about yourself because you're a pretty special person. Whenever <laughs> I'm somewhere with you and we speak in German, people are very surprised about your story, if you will. So yeah, yeah. where, where are you from and how did you learn German and why are you fluent? Yeah, so my name is Josh. Um, I'm a Cincinnati native. Um, grew up in a very typical white American ho household. Um, when I started learning German, I learned I started in 10th grade, so I think I was around 13 or 14. And the reason I started was because my last name is very German. That mm -hmm. was kind of the initial um, motivation. And I once had a school counselor who said with the last name, that sounds so German, you can't learn anything else than German. Okay. You can't learn Spanish, is what she said. Um, when I started learning German, it was re came really easy to me and it was a lot of fun. Um, and I saw the world starting to open up for me through it, meeting mm -hmm. different exchange students and whatnot. So that w helped to um, encourage me to continue. So it's just been a progression since then. So your last name is German, but you don't actually have German heritage, not at least in the past few generations, right? Yeah, my family's been in the US for at least six generations. Yeah, so, so no one in my have, family speaks German. Yeah, nobody speaks German. You don't have any German grandparents or anything like that. No. Nope. So you really just felt like learning German in high school. Yeah, my dad, my dad learned a little German in high mm -hmm. school. So it was always something that I knew he did um, that I thought was interesting. So that was part of the motivation as well, but he knows Duncan, Bitte, and that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> and the crazy thing is, you'll hear it in a second for all the German viewers, um, that he speaks German with basically no accent. So he sounds like a native German speaker. So when he meets my friends or family or whoever we meet, everyone always assumes like, they'll ask me, oh, hey, where are you from? And I'll be like, oh, I'm from Germany. We always like tell each other stories. Yeah. Um, I'll be like, I'm, I'm from Germany and I moved here and I'm a permanent resident, blah, blah, blah. And then they're like, oh, and then where are you from? And he's like, I'm from here. And they're like, no, but where are you really from? And he has to explain that yeah. he's actually an American, which people just can't believe. And so when's the first time that you went to Germany and how often have you been to Germany and how long did you stay? Because also a lot of people just naturally assume that you must have attended high school in Germany yeah. or anything like that. So the first time that I ever went to Germany was 2014. It was a graduation trip with my high school. So a big group of Americans went and we did the typical tour of all of the main cities in Central mm -hmm. Europe. Um, that was the first time I was there. Since then, I think I've been back between like nine and 10 times. Mm -hmm. Last time I counted, I think it was 10 or 11. Um, short a trips, lot. yeah, a lot of them were just short trips. Um, but on top of that, I've had some opportunities to do internships in Germany. So while I was in college, um, I went over for three months to do an internship with a company that had also had a location here in Cincinnati mm -hmm. and in Germany. Um, in addition to that, then I now work for a German company so I've gotten to go over quite a bit with work and I've spent in total time living in Germany nine months. Which kind is of not that three much. Three month stints each time. Yeah. yeah, which like nine months in total is really not all that much. No, it's not. Okay, so um, I asked you guys on Instagram what questions you have for us about our bilingual friendship and you guys submitted so many questions. So I just like... I'm going to look through the questions on my phone and see which ones we can answer and which ones we find interesting. So the question that definitely uh, was asked the most by like probably 30 people was which language do we talk to each other in the most or do we switch languages? Do we speak in a mix of languages? Do we switch mid sentence? Those kind of things. So What's our answer? <laughs> ich würde sagen, dass wir fast die ganze Zeit auf Deutsch sprechen. Ja, also normalerweise sprechen wir Deutsch miteinander. Auch jetzt, ähm, wir sind gerade bei Josh zu Hause. Ja. Und äh, sobald ich zur Tür reinkomme, sprechen wir eigentlich Deutsch, obwohl seine Eltern kein Deutsch sprechen. Ja. 
Ich würde sagen, dass Deutsch eher so die Basis ist und ja. wenn, also zum Beispiel in meinem Fall, wenn es dann um emotionale Sachen geht oder so, dann fällt es mir zum Beispiel leichter, Englisch zu reden ja. und in dem Fall würde ich wahrscheinlich dann zu Englisch switchen, aber ansonsten reden wir fast immer Deutsch. Ja, fast immer Deutsch, auch so, wenn wir uns anrufen oder so. Auf jeden Fall ist es aber auch situationsabhängig. Also mhm. zum Beispiel, wenn wir was in der Gruppe machen und da ist jemand dabei, der natürlich kein Deutsch spricht, dann sprechen wir auf jeden Fall Englisch. Ist auch überhaupt nicht schwer. Also wir wechseln dann auch einfach hin und her. Was sind noch so Situationen? Das ist eine gute Frage. Also auch auf jeden Fall so, nicht nur wenn es emotional wird, sondern ich würde auch sagen, wenn man irgendwas erzählt, was man in der einen Sprache erlebt mhm. hat. Also genau, zum Beispiel, das wollte ich gerade erwähnen. Also zum Beispiel, als ich in Deutschland gelebt habe, also man gewöhnt sich dran, bestimmte Geschichten in einer bestimmten Sprache zu erzählen. Ja. Und wenn man dann versucht, das andersrum zu machen, zum Beispiel, ich habe was auf Deutsch erlebt und dann diese Geschichte mehrmals auf Deutsch erzählt und dann plötzlich auf einmal muss ich das auf Englisch machen, dann fällt es mir manchmal schwer. Ich glaube, das ist bei dir auch ja. so. Ähm, und von dem her, ich glaube, es ist so situationsabhängig, ja. wie du gesagt hast. Aber wir machen es dann auch oft so, also zum Beispiel, wir haben gerade eben eine kleine Sightseeing-Tour mhm. durch seine Nachbarschaft gemacht und dann sprechen wir auf Deutsch und dann sagst du halt einfach, okay, ich muss jetzt kurz auf Englisch yeah. wechseln, weil es einfach gerade leichter ist, weil es vielleicht... And I think that's a good example too, because like, we're currently in the area where I grew up. Yeah. So when I'm going through certain areas, it's like, that's my, exactly. my childhood back in the time when exactly. I didn't speak any German. So yeah. it's easier for me to talk about those things in English. Yeah. And then the thing is though, as soon as we switch, the other person usually switches mm -hmm. too. So that yeah. was another question. A few people asked that um, if we ever talk in two different languages so that I speak in my first mm. language and he speaks in his first language and I would say that's not really I would say that pro probably never happens. No, hardly ever. Maybe like if, I think I, I may have done that sometimes if we speak in German and then you switch to English because there's just like this one sentence that you can mm. only describe in English but our main language right now is German, I may reply back mm -hmm. in German. Yeah. But a whole conversation, no. Like usually if I reply back in German, then you're going to speak German yeah. again too. Mm -hmm. The only thing I would say as far as when we switch languages, sometimes for me, when we're texting with each other, I'm like, oh, I have to write this out in German. <laughs> I'll just write it in English. Yeah. Sometimes that happens to me. Yeah, that was another question. So another question that came a few times was, which language do you text each other in? And that's, I mean, that's basically the same thing. Like yeah. talking, texting, whatever, that's all the same thing. So usually in German, Sometimes I even did that where I would text you in English yeah. and I didn't even notice. Yeah, I know for me, my autocorrect is so confused. Oh, same. Yep. <laughs> Especially with Spanish mixed in there somewhat too. I mean, my autocorrect has no clue depending on what keyboard I have, what language I'm yeah. supposed to be writing. That's the same for me. So like in both languages, I always text a bunch of bullshit because my phone always corrects to the wrong language for some reason. Yeah. Whenever yeah. I try to write I'm in yeah. English, sometimes it'll turn into im. In German, yeah, just like or, without or the, the other way around. Because mm -hmm. um, sometimes when I'm lazy in English and I don't want to capitalize my I, yeah. I just do I am without the apostrophe. Yeah. And that's a German word, so then it gets confused. I never capitalize my I. And another thing is that uh, preposition. So there's in and on in mm -hmm. English, right? And in German, we only have in. So yeah. I use in a lot more than on. So whenever I want to type on, my phone automatically automatically thinks that I want to say in. So then like all of my English sentences are usually wrong and yeah. people I think probably assume that I just don't know it any better. <laughs> But I can hardly ever type on, my phone doesn't want yeah. me to. Hatte jemand von euch in der Schule bilingualen Unterricht? Also ich nicht. Ich auch nicht. <lacht> ähm, wie gesagt, ich habe erst in der 10. Klasse angefangen mm -hmm. Deutsch zu lernen. Das ist eh ähm, ziemlich spät. Ja, aber im aber, Endeffekt, aber im Endeffekt nur, gar nicht. Nee, es war wirklich. Ja, klar, es, ja. es war halt eine completely normal school experience for me, American school experience. Ja. <lacht> Finde ich cool, wie du gerade gewechselt hast. Ja. Ähm, ja, ich auch nicht. Also, ich bin auf eine ganz normale Schule gegangen, ganz normales Gymnasium. Ich glaube, es gibt fast schon mehr Kindergärten. Also, es gibt einige mhm. bilinguale Kindergärten. Ähm, Schulen gibt es, aber ich kenne jetzt persönlich auch niemanden. Also, hier in Cincinnati Mann. gibt es kaum welche. Und wenn es dann eine gäbe, dann, dann wäre es wahrscheinlich Englisch-Spanisch, ne? Mhm, klar. Also ich meine, Cincinnati ist ja sowieso noch ziemlich ähm, deutschlastig. Also ja. das ist ja eine der wenigen Gegenden in den USA, wo man fast an allen Highschools oder an sehr vielen Highschools überhaupt ja, die Option hat, Deutsch zu lernen. Das mhm. ist ja nicht im ganzen Land so. Aber trotzdem ist ja natürlich Spanisch immer noch ja, auf die jeden Fall. beliebteste zweite Fremdsprache. Erste Fremdsprache. Second language. <lacht> Scheiße. So was passiert, wenn man zwei Sprachen Aber sagt man im Deutschen 
erste Fremdsprache. Fremdsprache. Ja, okay, weil es ja, ist ja, Fremd ist ja schon ja, Second. Aha. Ja, Second Language, erste Fremdsprache. Ja, zweite Fremdsprache wäre Third Language. Aber zweite Sprache würde man dann nicht sagen. Nee. Das ist meine zwei Deutsch ist meine zweite Sprache. Nee. Also ich meine, ich würde es verstehen. Ja, ja aber, aber ein Deutscher würde dann eher meine erste Fremdsprache. Fremdsprache. Okay, ja. interessant. Ja. Again what learned? <lacht> Again what learned is one of those really funny German sayings that sound really funny when you translate them literally into English. Yeah. That was a joke. I wouldn't actually say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you would only say that to someone who speaks German, right? Yeah. Okay, there's another question related to kind of like the first question we talk, talked about. Do you switch languages based on the topic of conversation? Are there some subjects that are better in the one language or the other? And we kind of talked about emotions, but maybe mm -hmm. there's something else. So one thing that came to mind when you were talking about that, and I somewhat mentioned it with the whole, if you're telling stories in a certain language, mm -hmm. you're used to saying it over and over again. Um, something that happened to me is I, when I started my current job and was in Germany learning, I was there for the learning process. Um, I come back and I didn't know a lot of technical terms in English. Yeah, that's so, so it was weird. so much easier for me to talk about robotics in German <laughs> than English, which was a process I can talk about both in both languages now. But, yeah. Um, yeah, you would just assume that such a complicated topic yeah. would be easier in your mother tongue, but yeah. it's not for some reason. Well, like I, my typical example that I always use is the Greifer Zwischenbaugruppe. Sure. Which now in English all is Germans a, know what he's talking about. <laughs> but that's a good example of the like compound words in German. But in, yep. in English, it would be your gripper interface module. It took me forever <laughs> to learn that in English. Yeah, see, I wouldn't even know what that is in German. Are you going to work on a hybrid language like Germanglish? Which so there is a term for this. So you know Spanglish. So um, we have Denglish because mm -hmm. German in German we say Deutsch, and then plus English is Denglish. Do we speak in that? I would say yes. Yeah. I it's I say that I speak English more than yeah. I speak German for sure. Yeah, I mean like for me it depends on who I talk to, but I definitely use even with my normal German family and friends, I use a lot of English words, but when we talk, then yeah. yes, because we just know that the other person understands it. I think it's interesting. I don't realize how much I use English in my German because mm -hmm. so many Germans do it as well yeah. until I'm in Germany talking to someone who doesn't speak good English. Really? And then sometimes I'll like try to use some more English phrase or like, I don't know, like I'll say like, ich habe die Sprachen geswitcht oder oh, so. Oh, yeah. And I don't know, sometimes it, it, I realize, okay, they're not quite getting it or, okay, I really should try to speak more pure German. Pure German, um, yeah. Which is something that we don't really have in English, that we use too many non-English words. I we guess, do, but... Yeah, I guess this one is kind of just, you can compare it to speaking slang. Yeah in English because geswitch that's really like youth language yeah. that's kind of like slang yeah I mean if I were in an official business meeting at work I wouldn't say that yeah I would say gewechselt yeah I wouldn't say that I wouldn't either. <laughs> but if I'm on the street talking to someone yeah yeah you would definitely say it to me yeah I would use that yeah yeah or like all those things that I've mentioned in my um das ist echt nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah all those all those words that I mentioned in my video on English words that German use wrong, yeah. Germans use wrong, um, get downloaded, um, mm -hmm. upgraded, nice, safe, yeah. all those words. Uh -huh. Which like was a process things. for me to get used to as well when yeah. I was learning German. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that sounds really weird. Like, why are they using that English yeah. word? That's like for me saying things like Gesundheit mm -hmm. in English, which I don't do that, but just hearing it is weird to me, to, uh, to me too. Yeah. How easy is it for each person to switch between languages? That's a fun question because I feel like it really varies. Mm -hmm. Not between the two of us, but just like, it's kind of like what mood you're in or like yeah. the form you're in that day. So some days for me, it's very easy to switch. Mm -hmm. Some days I have an English day, some days I have a German day, depending yeah. on like, I think which language I used first when I woke up or like some mm -hmm. days I talk for two hours to my friends and family in Germany and then it's really hard for me to speak English. Yeah. And then also the switching mid-conversation thing, which we do a lot, mm -hmm. gets easier when you're a little drunk. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. like at parties, oh, yeah. for me, for sure, like when I'm a little drunk, it gets really Let's easy. Let's say tipsy, not drunk. A little tipsy. It gets like after like a beer or two. Yeah. Tipsy. Um, it gets really easy to switch back and forth. And like also my English often gets better or at least you like you speaking that second language yeah. in that moment, you think it gets better. And then there is a point when you drink another one or two beers, yeah. then it 
gets worse again. Yeah, I so always say before my first beer, my English is perfect. Mm -hmm. After my first beer, my German is perfect. Mm -hmm. And after maybe my fourth or fifth beer, my Bavarian is perfect. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so he can also speak Bavarian dialect. Do you want to say something? I can't really speak it. I'm, think, good at, okay. I'm good at imitating. There was a question. There was a question there. Someone said that you should say Eichhörnchen and also the Bavarian okay. version. Yeah. Version so version. for those of you who don't know Eichhörnchen, is squirrel in English. Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> But in Bavarian it's Ochkatzl. Yeah, Or, and, and say um, Ochkatzlschwaf. Yeah, Ochkatzlschwaf. There you go. Luckily, I spent a decent amount of time in Bavaria and worked with people who spoke Bavarian, so I got used to it. Yeah. And like I said, if I've had a couple drinks and I have the confidence, I'll let it be <laughs> house Yeah, and also, <laughs> he also knows some Swiss German, which I do not understand any Swiss yeah. German. I do understand Bavarian dialect, and I would say, like, your Bavarian dialect skills are probably almost the same as mine. Um, you probably understand it better than I do. Yeah, I would, I would hope so that I understand it better, because <laughs> <laughs> I lived there my whole life, but... Um, My Swiss German isn't really Swiss. that good. I, But you understand, I understand a lot, it, and though. you know which words to use. Maybe you can't speak it yeah. fluently or anything. My but... Swiss German has gotten a lot worse. My family had an exchange student from Switzerland, which I think probably played a significant role in why I, why I wanted to continue learning German. Mm -hmm. um, But from him and spending time in Switzerland, having visited him, I got good at understanding Swiss German and I learned certain phrases and words. Yeah, but... that's, that's crazy for me because yeah. German isn't even your first language and I don't understand. Um, one more thing that I would like to mention that isn't really like in the questions, but it's about switching back and forth mm -hmm. too. Sometimes we switch between languages mm -hmm. and then we pronounce different <laughs> words differently. So even our names. So we yeah. basically like once we switch to German, we both have a German accent. Mm -hmm. And when we switch to English, we both more or less have an American accent. So I know how to say your name in English, Josh. Yeah. But then when I say, say it in German, I pronounce it's it the German way Josh. and I say Josh. Yeah. And it's the same with you. Yeah. No, for sure. When I'm speaking English, I don't say Feli. Yeah. I say Feli. Yeah, because it's like it, it feels fits more in the flow, kind of. Yeah. It's like the flow of words. And you did that the other day. We talked on the phone and it was like a more emotional topic. So we talked in English yeah. for a change and we said goodbye in English too. And you said, bye, Feely. And it sounded so <laughs> American. Like, I don't well, realize it when it happens, but yeah. yeah. Like technically that's not how you say my name and you know how to pronounce my name, yeah. but it's just something that happens when you're in the, in the English mode. No, for know? sure. And I think for me, it was weird when I was in Germany working um, and you do meet people who don't necessarily have the highest level of English. People would pronounce my name Josh. And that was so something good. that took me so long to get used to, and it still makes me so uncomfortable to hear Josh because I'm so used to either Josh yeah. or Josh. But Okay, the next question is, does being bilingual make it easier or better to be friends? Well, I definitely think it makes it easier to be friends mm -hmm. um, because you have a connection point with someone. Yeah. And then also, when you do speak a, another language at a fluent level, it changes your identity somewhat, in mm -hmm. my opinion. So you have someone who can both connect to, for me at least, my English-speaking identity and my German-speaking identity, and can relate to Very both true. experiences, which someone who's monolingual or hasn't spent time in Germany couldn't necessarily relate to on that level. Yeah, there was a question about that too, that was, do we have different personalities in the two questions? Mm -hmm. And so like the answer to that, which you just said is yes. Yeah. Like I would say I do, and I would say you do yeah. too, to a certain extent. So basically the bilingual part of it then makes it easier for the other person to fully know you, yeah. fully get to know you. I would agree. Um, and I mean, it's not like I'm a completely different person when I speak German, but maybe your manner of um, expressing yourself is a little different. In mm -hmm. German, you tend, I tend to be a little bit more direct than I would yep. in English. And um, I don't make small talk as much in German, even though I love to make small talk in English. Yeah, same for me. So there's just certain things that You, you, first of all, you know that you don't really use that in German, but mm -hmm. second of all, you don't really have the words in your head for that in yeah. German because people don't really say those yeah. things. Like, for example, um, in America, I'm like definitely more outgoing than I am in Germany. Yeah. And I'm more American. Um, and I say things like, thank you so much, I really appreciate it, or things like that. And in German, there really isn't any good authentic translation for that. Yeah. Like you can say Danke. Um, you can say vielen Dank. Um, das war echt nett von dir. But yeah. if you like Sounds overdo weird. it, it really doesn't sound sincere anymore. Yeah. I think 
and we've both had this experience when people ask us to translate things like they'll say how do you say this in german and they'll give you some really american saying or very americans like to speak in a very over the top manner yeah. and then you come back with the german equivalent which may not be the direct one to one tra uh, translation but it's like one word it's like danke like mm -hmm. someone says thanks so much yeah like, so basically you don't only translate the language you translate the culture too yeah. pretty much i would definitely say that's yeah. that's true do you ever talk about people around you using a different language? So I think any I think anyone who speaks another language <laughs> does it, even yeah. if you don't want to admit it and you know that it's not necessarily the nicest thing to do. I try not to, but it's very convenient. I mean, we're both not very mean people. Yeah, really I mean, and generally that. I'm not going to talk horrible about yeah. someone or horribly about someone, but I, I'll make a comment here or two like, Definitely. Did you just see what happened? Definitely. Or? Even like, so we have a few other friends who are bilingual. Mm -hmm. And um, even in situations when we're like at a restaurant or in an Uber even, like we yeah. had a situation where like we had a really <laughs> sketchy Uber driver. So like then of course we switched to German yeah. and we talk about him in German and we're like, do you feel comfortable with yeah. the situation? I don't know. So yeah. I was going to say it's really the only time I ever notice us doing it is when it's in a situation like that where we're really uncomfortable with something yeah. that someone else is doing and want to check on how everyone is feeling without yeah. having to um, not break the fourth wall but involve the other person in the conversation yeah. or it's just something private for a second yeah. like hey um, do you want to go to like the other party or do you yeah. prefer going home and then we're like yeah, yeah we both want to go home okay let's or just... if the party itself is just really <laughs> yeah. boring you're like let's get out yeah. of here Verbessert ihr euch gegenseitig sofort, wenn etwas falsch ist oder übergeht ihr das im Alltag? Und ich glaube, das ist ganz interessant, mhm. weil ich habe das Gefühl, das verändert sich manchmal. Also ganz am Anfang würde ich sagen, haben wir uns schon relativ oft verbessert. Ja. Vor allem du mich, weil da war ich auch noch relativ neu hier. Mhm. Und da habe ich auf jeden Fall oft Sachen gesagt, die irgendwie keinen Sinn ergeben haben. Und das hat immer das Gute Ich glaube, ich habe aber auch Glück gehabt, dass ich äh, neulich aus Deutschland zurückgekommen bin. Deswegen zu war mein Zeit, ja, zu der Zeit war ja, mein Gehirn eh schon auf Deutsch. Das kann gut sein. Aber was halt da immer total hilfreich ist, das habe ich vorher zu dir gesagt, als die Kamera noch nicht gelaufen mhm. ist, ähm, dass halt, wenn ich zum Beispiel irgendwas direkt aus dem Deutschen übersetze, was man so aber halt im Englischen nicht sagt und ich übersetze das wörtlich, wie zum Beispiel ein Sprichwort oder halt ja. irgendeine Redewendung, ähm, dann verstehst du halt, was ich meine, weil ja. du auch Deutsch sprichst. Genau. Und dann kannst du mich halt sofort verbessern und sagst so, hey Feli, das sagt man so nicht, ich weiß aber, was du meinst, man sagt so und so. Es ist genau andersrum, ne? das mit halt äh, erste Fremdsprache ja. und zweite Sprache, das hätte ich falsch gesagt. Ja. Ähm, und in solchen Fällen würde ich sagen, dass wir uns schon gegenseitig korre äh, korrigieren. Ja. Ähm, aber generell, also wenn, wenn wir persönlich miteinander, also nebeneinander sitzen und jemand macht einen Fehler, was klar ein klarer Fehler ist, dann würde ich schon sagen, Solange es nicht um ein emotionales Gespräch oder Thema geht. Ja, weil man will es ja auch nicht ständig unterbrechen. Genau, das und das sage ich meinen Freunden, meinen deutschen Freunden immer. Ich freue mich auf jede, ja. jede Korrektur, halt, solange wir nicht irgendwie diskutieren oder ein Argument haben oder ja. so. Ähm, äh, eine Diskussion. Diskussion, ja. <lacht> ein gutes Beispiel. Ja, dafür. genau. <lacht> ja. Genau. Auseinandersetzung, das ja, ist das Wort, was mir nicht eingefallen ist. Ja, haben wir eigentlich fast nie, aber... Ja. Ähm, ich würde fast sagen, dass wir uns am Anfang echt ein bisschen mehr verbessert haben als jetzt, wo ich fast finde, wir können es wieder mehr machen. Oder zumindest du bei mir ja, gerne, gerne, weil nach einer Zeit wird man halt so ein bisschen comfortable. <lacht> Wie sagt man das jetzt auf Deutsch? Ja. Man wird halt irgendwie so ein bisschen faul mit dieser ganzen ja, genau. Angelegenheit. Und Oder dann, man vergisst es manchmal. Ja, man vergisst es und man gewöhnt sich ja auch irgendwie so dran, dass der andere halt ab und zu mal was falsch sagt und dann merkt ja. man es gar nicht mehr so richtig. Also, ähm, aber ja, allgemein würde ich sagen, vor allem du und ich, ja. ähm, im Vergleich jetzt auch mit anderen Freunden, würde ich sagen, wir machen es schon. Viel. Und ich glaube, also in unserem Fall zumindest, wir beide, wir haben schon ein Niveau erreicht, wo es also nicht unbedingt perfekt ist, aber fast perfekt, ähm, dass wenn etwas dann falsch gesagt wird, dann fällt es uns auf und dann sagen wir, okay, es ja, ist kein großer Aufwand, das, den einen Fehler mal zu korrigieren. Ja. Es ist nicht, also wir gegenseitig immer... Äh, Fehler dann ja. haben oder machen, wenn wir dann reden. Ja, ja wir machen auch manchmal, ähm, also wir sprechen manchmal so Sachen an wie ähm, kleine Worte, die der andere immer falsch benutzt ja. oder Redewendungen, die der andere immer falsch benutzt und dann, wenn wir es halt ein paar Mal gehört haben, sagen wir so, ja übrigens, daran merkt man, genau. dass du kein Muttersprachler bist ja. oder so. und das ist dann ja das, total hilfreich. Du hattest ein Beispiel für mich damals. Für dich mit, mit eigentlich. Ähm, mit eigentlich. In, Im Englischen verwendet man actually... actually all the time, but in yeah. German it's not that that way, so, or you don't use it in the same sense yeah. at least, so you corrected me that once, and I think for a while there I was getting good at it, <laughs> and then I kind of fell back, and now I'm, I'm trying, I, no, I, 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 I'm conscious of it now. at least yeah. now, um, so that, that's a good example yeah. of where English may be a disadvantage, 
um, when learning German. Yeah, because I mean, but it's the same way both yeah. both ways. Because sometimes there's just, for me, for example, people say that I always say, for example, <laughs> which I just did, yeah. because we use that a lot in German. Das ist interessant, weil du bist nicht die eins, die die erste Person, die das mal gesagt hat. Um, ich kenne eine Mexikanerin, die immer, for example, sagt. So apparently, outside of English, in a lot of yeah. languages, people use that a lot. I there. wonder if that's just something that you learn in school at an no, early well, age, I, you get used to saying. But that. I, I use it all the time oh, in German, okay. yeah. and that's why I use it all the time in English too. That makes sense. So, but just English people phrase their sentences differently, yeah. so that they don't need that yeah. little phrase. What's interesting. Um, Since my German has gotten good, it's definitely influenced my English, and my English oh, yeah. grammar has gotten worse yeah. if I'm not concentrating. Um, so my family is no, they're like Josh, why? that sounds yeah. weird. They know it's because of German or because yep. of Spanish or whatever it may be. Um, but my mom noticed that I say the word exactly all the time in English now, <laughs> um, because Germans love to say genau. Genau. <laughs> so as something where it's like it creeps into the mm -hmm. other language. And I actually say tatsächlich more often, which I would say is the most accurate translation for actually, okay, yeah. on the other mm -hmm. hand. Mm -hmm. So I actually say tatsächlich way more, just yeah. like I do in English. And also jumping off of that is that sometimes, depending on the context, when I have like a bad German day or we're at a party and we're switching back and forth, mm -hmm. sometimes I'll start a sentence in German, which is my first language, and I'll start it with an English sentence structure so that like halfway through the sentence, I realized that there, there's no way out here. Like, this is not how the sentence works. And then I have to start all over again. And that's just, honestly, a really, I want to say embarrassing thing almost. It's scary when you start to learn or lose your native yeah, language. Yeah, but it's apparently, so I've heard that for people who were raised bilingually, that doesn't happen all that much. But hmm. for people who learned a second language later in life, that's something that actually happens. And I'm sure a lot of you people know someone who moved abroad and actually kind of lost their first language yeah. or speaks their first language with an accent. It'd be interesting to ask uh, our friend Cynthia about Yeah, I, I don't think Cynthia has that problem, honestly. Yeah, that's interesting. Since she was raised bilingually. Yeah. Yeah. She's a friend of ours who was raised in Germany, but um, has a German dad and an American mom. Yeah. And then she moved to the States when she was 14. So she really is 100% bilingual. What language does your friend think slash dream in? And this is interesting because I just answered this question for myself okay. in my past video. Mm -hmm. And I said that I don't know. Like, I don't think I dream in a language. What about yeah. you? Um, why? We were talking about this before, too. I tend to know, realize what language I'm speaking. Yeah. Um, I know that you tend to, they get kind of <laughs> muddled together. Um, but for me, I definitely would say I tend to dream more in English, but that could have to do with the fact that I'm currently living in mm -hmm. the United States. Um, at the same time, when I'm in Germany, I definitely dream more in German. And I would say it also depends on the topic of the dream. You know, mm -hmm. if you're in a dream or some of my other German speaking friends are in a dream, The dream is normally in German. Okay. So you said you don't realize which language you're speaking mm -hmm. in. It's the same for me. And like, I just don't sometimes realize which language I have to switch to. So sometimes I'll be talking to my friend on the phone, but I'm at home in Cincinnati. So I'll be talking German on the phone and then like my roommate wants something from me. And so I know I have to switch language, but yeah. I somehow switched the wrong way. So then I end up speaking, saying something in German to my American roommate and then saying something in English to my German yeah. friend on the phone. I'll be like, hold on, ya was gibt's? And it's like exactly the wrong way. And I, I knew I That had to speak to two too. languages, but I just do it the exact wrong way. No, I just was thinking not necessarily about the language, but just how um, sometimes people forget that I'm American. Yeah. And we were hanging out with one, one of our German friends. And what was the name of the comedian from... TV Total. Oh, Stefan Raab. Yeah, I was. I know who that is just from <laughs> watching videos, but I couldn't as associate the face with the name. Yeah. I was like, yes, Dustin. Yeah. And he couldn't really believe that I didn't know him because for a minute he forgot. Yeah, I was that's American. like the downside of being bilingual yeah. and almost having no accent. Like, yeah. both of us kind of do. I mean, like, especially when you're in a social setting and it's loud and everyone's maybe a little tipsy or it's just like casual topics that you talk about, you, it's really hard to notice any kind of accent. Yeah. And so then people forget that you don't know certain things and people will use slang with me mm -hmm. that I don't understand yeah. or people will use pop culture references yeah. that I have no clue what they're talking about. And then it's really awkward to just in the middle of the conversation be like, um, excuse me, <laughs> something that's so essential to this that? conversation. 
I have no clue what you're talking <laughs> <Yeah>. about. <laughs> or it's just like a joke and you're not sure if it's important or not. Like, yeah. was that a good joke, bad joke? Was it racist? I don't know. And you're just like, um, could you explain that to me? I'm from yeah. Germany. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, that's an interesting thing when you do not have, a, or if you don't have a heavy accent, like having to explain to someone that you're not a native speaker. Yeah, how do you do that? I try not to unless it comes to the okay. situation where I have yeah. to. Um, but I don't know, it's just, I, I, I just say, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I, I remember specifically once, I, I think I was in Munich, and it was, yeah, it was one of the first times I was there, and I had to get gas. Mm -hmm. And the way that you pump gas in Germany is a little different than in the U.S. In the U.S., you normally put your card into the machine at the gas pump first, then you pump your gas. In Germany, you pump your gas, and then you have to go inside and pay for it. Yeah. And I didn't know. The, the numbers are different. The names of the gas is all different. Yeah. And I went up to this one woman, and I was like, Entschuldigung, ich weiß nicht genau, wie das funktioniert. <laughs> und ich, obwohl ich meinen Führerschein hatte und alles, und sie, sie hat mich so angeschaut, so, wie, hä? <laughs> <laughs> Wieso weißt du nicht, bist du, bist du deppert oder was? And in that moment I was like, oh shoot. Like, es tut mir leid, ich weiß nicht, wie es funktioniert. Really? Nee, das habe ich nicht gemacht. Oh, okay. But at the same time, like, I should have just put on a heavy American yeah. accent. I know. Because it's just easier that way. I know. Sometimes it really is easier. Because people look at you like you yeah. have 12 eyes, like you, you have wings and horns. It's yep. like I've been in that situation too where I was like, should I just speak with a more German accent right now? Because mm -hmm. this is super uncomfortable that this other person doesn't know this right now. Yeah. I feel like it would be better if the other person knows. Yeah, give them like, some hints. Yeah, I've been I've been in situations where then like I would be like by the way, I'm German and then the big misunderstanding happens in the US where the other person will say, "Oh, I'm German too." <laughs> and they obviously speak about heritage when yeah. I, and then I'm like, "No, I was actually born and raised in Germany." And they're like, "Wait, what? And you came to the US when you were a little kid?" And I'm like, "No, I just came to the US 2 years ago, so I don't I yeah. don't really know what you're talking about." You should just start here. saying, "I'm sorry, English isn't my first language." Yeah. Probably, but I've had that uh -huh. situation where I was like, "I'm German," and then people think, yeah. "Oh, cool, I'm German too." <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we have a lot more questions on my phone that we would really like to talk about, but it's just way too much and we've been recording forever already. So we're just gonna wrap it up for now and we'll try and do a part two if you guys enjoyed this video. If you don't, then of course we won't do this and we'll just talk about it without a camera running. But if you enjoyed this, please let us know by leaving us a comment below, um, hitting the thumbs up button, and then we'll get together for a second part. Talk about these questions, including which language do we talk in when we're mad? Um, what's the longest German word that he knows? Also discussing different German and American accents. And if you have more questions for us, feel free to leave them in the comments below and then we'll talk about those too. For now, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Um, subscribe to my channel if you like what I do on here. If you want to, also check out my new Patreon page if you want to become a patron for this channel and support me even more. But for now, I just hope that everyone's being safe and healthy and I hope I'll see you next time. Tschüss and Servus, servus. and Fiat euch! Fiat euch. <laughs> Haut rein! <laughs>